Welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, attending today. Today is going to be a little bit of a different format. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to our first college council meeting with Dr. Tim Sands as our president. He has really hit the ground running. I'm very excited. Um, before we get into any uh, reports or any other business, um, I would like to uh, have a motion on the minutes. I, I know you didn't get the minutes this time as early as you usually do. Uh, moving forward, we'll go back to the format of everyone receiving the minutes at least a week in advance. Um, so the minutes that were shared this morning, there's seven pages. Um, I believe the college council members have had an opportunity to review them. Um, so when you're ready, just let me know uh, if you have a motion. Motion to accept. Second. Uh -huh. Second. Second, Scott Reich. Any uh, changes or amendments? Hearing none, the minutes of the December 11th, 2020 college council meeting are approved. And let's move on to uh, the report from our president, Dr. Sam. Take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Madam Chair, to the council, and to everyone on this call, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to share around the first six weeks of my time here at Old Westbury. As you alluded to, Madam Chair, it has been a real experience of jumping into the pool with both feet, so to speak, uh, which one really should do. I want to welcome everyone to um, this opportunity. And, and again, thank you for allowing me to talk. I was given, I think, 40 minutes. Am I correct, Madam? Oh, no, I'm wrong. Oh. I think I was given 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully, I could uh, speak quickly enough and share at the same time everything that I've put together for you. So I want to first talk about COVID-19 in terms of my report. Our readiness and response this semester has gone well thus far. I want to remind everyone that only 7% of classes have in-person elements at this point, and those occur twice monthly or at even greater intervals. The library is also open to students by appointment for studying for supportive services, tutoring, writing, etc. Our Defend the Den Against COVID-19 testing program has done roughly 1,000 tests in the first five weeks of this semester and have surfaced only four positive cases. Another eight cases have been self-reported through external testing by students and faculty. Most of those self-reports were from people who are not coming to campus on any meaningful schedule. I want to compliment the Student Health Center team for all of its efforts in keeping the campus safe across the pandemic. And I just send a special shout out and note that they have been working very diligently and it is appropriate to commend them for doing so. Planning discussions for fall 2021 are moving forward in areas including instruction and related modalities, potential residential life offerings and other campus operations. We are unclear today what our instructional model will be for the fall. In terms of campus residential life, proposals being developed for occupancy at 50 and 100% levels. No firm decisions to announce as of yet because there are so many shifting variables, including state guidance that are likely to still come forward. As a note, we now find ourselves where many colleges were a year ago with regard to planning for partial or full return of residents to campuses and in-person instruction. We will benefit from the best practices that have evolved over the past year as we construct our plan for this coming fall. Again, more to come. With regards to middle states, the campus virtual middle states visit is set for March 22nd through the 24th, which is next month. I've, re I've reviewed our self study report and it is submitted as required. There may be an element of participation for college council members, so please watch for words from our middle states co-chairs. Enrollment management. 
We recently implemented Slate, which is a CRM uh, feature for admission, which will go live next month. It will help us improve response time on inquiries toward applications and generate better communications with prospects and create greater efficiencies in the management and process of prospective student information. These type of, of CRMs are state of the art and necessary in today's enrollment management environment. So we're really fortunate to be onboarding that and we should be able to, to shore up in a very consistent way our enrollment management efforts. With regard to advancement, going forward, institutional advancement will be a critical part of our strategic plan for the college, leveraging our assets and relationships are a critical part of the advancement process. Recent surveys of alumni and the class of 2020 clearly indicate a high level of satisfaction with the quality of the education we deliver and the overall college experience that we provide for our students. But in order for us to capitalize on this goodwill built up over years of personal interaction, we must get better at student customer service and aftercare of our alumni. We will recruit a dedicated team of experience development professionals and build on the work that has already been done. Our college foundation will be strengthened and expanded to meet our fundraising goals and the needs of our students. We will also build stronger, deeper relationships with the communities we serve and work with institutions and individuals who support our mission and share our values. We are beginning the search for a new vice president for institutional advancement. As you know, Mr. Randy Daniels, who is with us today, is slated to end his formal role as interim director of advancement on April 30th. I've asked him to continue until the fall with a narrow focus on re-energizing the foundation. I've asked the new chief of staff, Dr. Joanne Robinson, who I will introduce later, to chair the search for the new vice president and to oversee <coughs> IA after April 30th until that new VP arrives. Business and finance. State budget process is underway in Albany. SUNY leadership has stated that the portion of the governor's executive budget proposal related to higher education is as strong as we could expect it to be. Although the real driver of its impact will be whether or not we receive federal stimulus funding. SUNY anticipates a loss of direct state tax support totaling just $69 million. But that figure is predicated on, again, the $6 billion in new federal aid. If any of you recall, there were worries about that impact being not 69 or 70 million, but anywhere from 300 to 400 million, just a few weeks ago. Today, I began my outreach to local state elected officials, both to introduce myself and to support SUNY's budget advocacy efforts. I've spoken with, uh, he told me to call him Chuck, so I will call him as he's asked me to. I've spoke to Chuck Levine about an hour and a half ago, and I have a meeting this afternoon with Senator Jane Gorm. In terms of CARE and CARISA stimulus funding, CARES Act student award of $2,761,000. Of that, approximately $6,300 remain. CARES Act institutional award of just about $2.7 million are all expensed and encumbered. MIS award, minority servant institution, MSI award, excuse me, minority servant institution. We received about 423,000. We have about just a little under 200,000 remaining for distribution. Carissa Student Award funding, we received about 2.7 million and we are waiting to disperse that. We are waiting for SUNY guidance. Carissa Institutional funding where we received about 6.8 million. We are again waiting for SUNY guidance. 
on how we are able to disperse. Recently approved capital projects, design phase. These items are in the design phase. The replacement of the student union roof, rehab, rehabilitation of campus greens between, excuse me, behind the campus center, replacement of the ring road, and replace emergency generators. Moving into construction phase, we have the renovation of Dwayne L. Jones Recital Hall, the expansion of the Success Center, replace hand stair rails in the bathrooms in the atrium, and replace seating in McGuire Theater. Feasibility study, study, we are engaging in feasibility study for the Clark Atlanta Center, excuse me, Clark Atlanta. You, you, that's from my morals days. Clark Athletic Center and the athletic field. In student affairs, SUNY Westbury will participate in spring sports in the Skyline Conference with baseball, softball, and men's golf. That will begin later in March. The college is receiving $75,000 in student emergency funds along with another $7,500 for administrative support from the Hexter, I hope I got that right, Hexter Foundation for Children. Student Affairs will be managing the application and approval, approval process for our students. We've seen, we received uh, 41, uh, just over $41,000 match is being provided by the Old Westbury College Foundation to secure this funding. We're awaiting the completion of contract before announcing the process to students and funding is to be used throughout 2021. The Center for Student Leadership and Involvement and the Office of Residential Life hosted a virtual MLK Day of service in honor of Dr. King's birthday in January. It was a day long event and I will say it was a wild success. It was one of the few days, you know, I had just arrived to campus and it was a wonderful way to join the community. In terms of SUNY system, yesterday was a very good day for SUNY. I don't know how many of you had an opportunity to watch the activities. First, there was a celebration of 25 years of Hispanic serving institutions in the system that featured the gains made in supporting Lat Latinos and Latinx students over the past quarter century. It was truly impressive. During the celebration, the chancellor announced the removal application fees, automatic enrollment into SNAP programs for eligible students, the push for EOP for medical school programs, and Hispanic serving and a Hispanic serving leadership institute. At the Board of Trustees meeting, which took place an hour later, the system-wide diversity, equity, inclusion action plan was revealed. This groundbreaking plan will transform SUNY into a leader for diversity and excellence throughout higher education. There was also announced at the Board of Trustee meeting, a resolution that was passed that made all single use bathrooms across the system gender neutral. That's impressive. And it was a really proud moment for me to be a part of that system, part of this system. So I wanna just finish by talking for a few moments about my first six weeks. In my first six weeks, we have begun to bring on a new team within the president's staff. And I wanna introduce those members, now two of whom are on this call and one will be joining us on Monday. The first is Dr. Joanne Robinson who is our new executive vice president and chief of staff. Uh, can you wave Joe, Joanne? Um, Joanne will be responsible for the strategic elevation of the college, emergency response, and as is a custom for chief of staff, special assignments among many other responsibility. New assistant to the president or commonly understood as the executive assistant to the president, we use them interchangeably, is Ms. Lissandra Ramos. Could you wait? Both of them came on board. Uh, well, actually, Lissandra came on uh, Thursday, last Thursday, 
and Joanne began this Monday and they have already jumped in and are, as you would say, doing their thing. On Monday, Ms. Martha Santana will come in as the assistant to the president for administration and special initiatives. Her responsibility will be management of special projects that, are, that expressly seek to elevate the institution in rapid form. We have made some changes in our governance design with the goal of ensuring shared governance and greater transparency. We have added a VP meeting, which is exactly as it sounds, the meeting of the VP. Uh, Monday morning, every Monday morning, uh, to work on the administration of the institution at a high level. We have added to our cabinet meetings. They now include deans of the school, enrollment management, and our faculty senate chair. We will now be instituting monthly senior leaders meeting, which will include selected middle managers from across the college. That will take place within the next, those meetings will begin within the next two weeks, that senior leadership meeting. Finally, I think everyone knows that I've tried to be seen in my first six weeks as moving about the campus, popping in and out of Zoom sessions with anyone who is willing to talk about what it means to be here at Old Westbury. As I've said, I want to be seen as listening. And that means that I have been at faculty Senate meetings, student programs, including painting, painting with Khalif, uh, who I might add did not paint with us, but no hard feelings, Khalif. You had us paint, but you didn't. Uh, moving around the campus again, holding open door meetings with various members of the community who want to talk to me. In this period, I've learned about our rich history the legacy that we inherit here at Old Westbury, the profound mission and the values of our college, the degree to which faculty have always figured prominently and dare I say, centrally to students and graduates affinity toward our school. I've learned about the student experience and I've discovered a place that was thoughtfully managed by my predecessors. I'm learning about our potential as well as our resource limitations. And in the process, I've discovered a bunch of great people and a very bright future for SUNY Old Westbury. Upon my arrival, I formed a transition team made up of about 14 key stakeholders from across the campus community who agreed to aid me in my transition to the college. As it turned out, as it turns out, the focus of today's college council meeting in an effort to help prime the pumps, I'll share relevant discoveries from these meetings with the transition team. We talked in our three meetings about the, excuse me, we talked in our three meetings about the things that they view to be important to orient me to the college. We talked about leveraging the alternative care facilities, shared governance and transparency, the brand and brand management and resources and fundraising. Relevant takeaways, relevant in the sense of what Madam Chair you have or would have us discuss today. Some of the takeaways from my meeting with the transition team are as follows. The need for full throated buy-in of the Old Westbury mission, both internally and externally. Secondly, Old Westbury should no longer be considered a hidden gem. Associated with that, it was said that many, most across Long Island do not know who we are and or do not know what we are about. Our value proposition is missing. We also need greater regional awareness which would lead to greater regional engagement with our college. Again, there's a need for brand identity and a brand campaign. Fourth, there's a need for project 
excuse me, there's a need for a project based for project based work in the external community that allows old Westbury students to show the community their dedication and commitment to social justice. Fifth, there's a need for alignment with some of Long Island's largest social service organizations to enable the college to better support the diverse needs of our student body. And finally, the transition team highlighted that we need resources to support our students' success. We need resources to financially stabilize the college and we need resources to elevate the college. Madam Chair, thank you for allowing me to present my report today. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much for that um, very sincere report. Dr. Sams, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, from the moment Dr. Sams arrived, he has demonstrated that he is an excellent listener spending a great deal of time undergoing the critical task of hearing from all levels of the campus from the ground up. He's extremely personable and approachable and clearly exemplifies by his actions that he will be and has been a collaborative leader. He's already bringing people together to the table. Um, he's demonstrating a problem solving approach uh, demonstrating problem solving using a collaborative approach. And his leadership over the past six weeks overwhelmingly confirms that we got the best possible person to lead this ship and he will certainly take Old Westbury to new levels of success. So thank you, um, we made the right decision. And now we don't have a competitive school across the street. <laughs> Uh, I also want to give a warm welcome to his three new very talented hires, Dr. Joanne Robinson, Ms. Alondra, Ms. Lissandra Ramos, and Ms. Martha Santana, who I look very forward to meeting uh, next week. It is evident that Dr. Sams is building a strong, talented team around him, and I look forward to wor working with each of them. So while some of you may be familiar with the role of college counsel, there are many out there who are not. A lot of questions are raised about what a college council's function is. Are we merely ornamental, ceremonial? Are we advisory? Are we advocates? Uh, how involved does the college council get in budgetary issues? Um, actually the naming of buildings? And the answer is it, it really depends. Um, and it's a hybrid of really all of the above. Under the education law, our primary role is to provide local supervision of the institution we represent. But this primary function promulgated by the legislature some 60 odd years ago has proven to be outdated. Uh, under the rubric of ACT, a strategic planning committee was recently formed with only eight members, eight college council members. Um, I think about four or five are, are college council chairs. Fellow council member uh, here, Melissa Archbold and myself were honored to be asked to serve on this, on this committee. Uh, we have been asked, we have been tasked with creating a more workable framework for all college councils, uh, including developing a mission statement and perhaps proposing revisions to the statute to present to the legislature. Next week, we actually have a meeting, it's just the eight of us with Chancellor Malatris to discuss his vision and what he sees and what he would like to uh, get out of the college councils. And we will work uh, under his uh, uh, direction and create uh, a more workable framework, hopefully, so that people are more aware of what our function is, so that our functions and duties are, are more defined uh, and we can then better assist our institutions uh, in, in succeeding and advancing. So I will certainly keep you posted as that develops. What I have gleaned from other institutions where the role of the College Council is more than just ceremonial uh, and actually does assist in the success of their institution is that individual council members are liaisons for their local community, for their local communities and really 
assist in building a relationship between um, the, the president and the local communities. So moving forward, there's going to be a new format for some of, not all of them, but for some of the college council meetings that we have, where um, we are going to try to be more forward thinking and, and build upon that. So what I'm asking for today is for each of our college council members to provide uh, the president with their vision and what some of their ideas are as to how to best integrate our new president into local communities, build relationships with important leaders, stakeholders, whether it's in politics, the area of fundraising, the area of branding. Um, I'm happy to hear that Dr. Sams has already met with some pretty powerful political leaders. Um, there are many more meetings to, uh, to, to schedule. So if there are important people for him to meet, he'll be more than happy to attend those meetings and, and break bread and friend raise and do what he's got to do to advance our institution. We were all selected for, by one person or another and our names were forwarded to the governor for appointment. And I, it, if you look at what we all have in common, the college council members, we really bring diversity of thought to the table and forward thinking vision. So what I would like us to do is help uh, Dr. Sams build and foster relationships and uh, improve some of the services that we provide, for instance, like mental health services. We have a couple of uh, college council members that could assist in that regard. So whatever your special specialty is, whatever your area of practice is, whatever ties you have, it's to be the liaison on behalf, of the, on behalf of those communities and bring Dr. Sands to those communities. Um, last fall, we attended the ACT conference at which Chancellor Malatris placed an emphasis on a lot of different issues, but what's relevant here is he's actions oriented. He's less for redundancy and all the red tape, which is good news for us and our new president because that means it, it shouldn't be, and I'm hoping it won't be as difficult to accomplish changes as it has been in the past. Um, so I took that to mean that he wants it to make it, he wants to make it easier for campuses, for SUNY campuses to accomplish things. He wants to build a more direct pipeline within the SUNY system. For instance, being able to get any degree within the system and not having to look outside of it. So those are all pluses. With that, I would like to turn it over to uh, the first college council member that I've asked to speak here today, Mr. Scott Reich. He's a brilliant attorney who is, I think, the longest standing council member um, that we have. So Scott, if you could please share some of your ideas. Uh, sure. Well, first of all, I think uh, Judge Hohauser predates me by uh, a little while, and, and uh, he's got the gray hair to prove it. So, um, Judge, thanks for uh, being the uh, perhaps the most uh, senior member. And, and Madam Chair, thanks so much for your wonderful leadership. I think you've done a tremendous job in advancing the vision of Old Westbury and also ensuring that we're organized. And I'm very thankful to you for organizing um you know this discussion and and just rethinking how we do business as a council because i think it's time for us to do that um and i'd like to echo your thoughts on welcoming dr sams i think we have made a great choice so dr sams it's wonderful to see you again um and i had mentioned to to the to the chair that i have a business conflict at one but i'm gonna try to just stay on for two more minutes so i can share a couple of thoughts and then obviously look forward to um speaking further um, so a couple ideas that I had um, just sort of brainstorming a little bit, and I agree that meeting with, you know, all elected officials locally is a good idea, and I wouldn't focus only on ones whose districts overlap with Old Westbury, because as you'll find, Dr. Sams, there are often instances at the state level where the Long Island delegation um, comes together, you know, sometimes even across party lines um, to advocate for certain things on Long Island. So I think having relationships with uh, all, uh, you know, assembly and Senate members from Long Island delegation would be uh, beneficial. Um, I'm going to give some more thought and I'll speak with the, the chair offline so that we can, you know, make sure I can devote the right amount of time to this, but a couple of just quick thoughts that I, that I thought would be helpful. One is um, I'd like to connect you with uh, the uh, opinion editor at Newsday who, uh, um, you know, is responsible for curating content because I think it would be 
a nice relationship for you to have. And I'm sure that, you know, Mike Kinane obviously has a lot of relationships in the press also. So perhaps, um, you know, he, he's in touch with these folks. But I think that it'd be great for, you know, certain things when you have ideas or reports that you want to share about how the state system is doing or how specifically we're doing at Old Westbury. I think that would be a good format given that the reader is the largest readership um, you know, uh, platform on the island. Um, another is that, and this is less about um, necessarily, you know, attracting money or attention per se, but one that I think could help with attracting people to the student body in terms of application pool, which is visiting the local high schools, especially the ones that have come to be feeders for our academic body. Because um, I think that one thing that we all probably recognize is that the personal touch of somebody who's charismatic like yourself go a long way in putting something on the map. And so um, I'm sure there are certain communities that we have larger numbers from already just by virtue of, you know, relationships with our school and relationships with teachers and, and guidance counselors in particular districts. But I think that especially for some of the larger student bodies, if we could arrange for opportunities for you to come meet and perhaps give a talk for you know, 15 or 20 minutes, but then literally just when it's safe to do so, obviously, um, but to engage with students and put a face on our university, because, you know, I think Dr. Butts did a great job as an ambassador. Um, every time there, there's a transition in leadership, it's a fresh opportunity to put new blood and new energy and make the rounds again. And I think that would be a worthwhile thing to do. Um, you know, one step down from Newsday, just on the publications, is that we have, uh, as you probably know, a lot of community newspapers. There's the Anton newspapers, there's the Island Now, and some of these places that have far reach. And I think that if we could craft an idea around, you know, perhaps a monthly column where you where you tackle a different issue in public education or something relating to, um, you know, work at the at the state level, I think it's just good visibility. And um, occasionally they have online forums um, and perhaps in non-pandemic times, you know, panel discussions, then I think you'd make a great participant in those to increase your visibility and that of the school. Uh, those of you who read Newsday may have seen this morning, I think it was this morning, perhaps it was yesterday, but uh, Kevin Law is stepping down as the chair of the Long Island Association, but that group is a really key influential group of, of thought leaders and business leaders on the island. And I think that we need to make sure that you get in front of the existing, you know, infrastructure, even though Kevin Law's on the way out, but so when some a replacement is named that we can build a relationship there because that's where, you know, high dollar donors are going to be potentially found and it's good to have um, those connections. Um, I think that, you know, we need to give some thought also to, um, you know, local organizations that have perhaps in you know, non-pandemic times when we can actually get together. But um, once we've started doing some things under your leadership at SUNY Old Westbury, I think it'd be great to highlight those things um, at, um, you know, in, in the context of some of the other foundations that exist that are not affiliated with Old Westbury, where perhaps you could become an honoree um, you know, that, that represents, you know, some kind of work that you've done. So I'm, I'm putting it on you, obviously, to do things that merit the, uh, you know, the, 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 the honoring in the first place, which I have no doubt you'll do. But I think it'd be great to, um, to get you in front because that's where we can meet a diverse group of people. Um, the other thing is that I think we need to think a little bit more locally around the Old Westbury community, which is largely affluent in terms of the residents of the village and figure out ways that we can inculcate deeper relationships there. Um, so perhaps, uh, Madam Chair, we could, you and I could speak offline and try to identify some people, because um, I think what would be great to, it would be, I know that the foundation does a lot of this work, but there's no reason that the College Council can't also be involved in this work, too, in deepening relationships with some of the local community members for whom, you know, what we might find to be meaningful donations to the foundation may be smaller donations to them, just given their business success and so forth. So I apologize for speaking quickly. I'm, I'm getting pinged um, for a business call. So I, I regret that I have to step off, but I certainly look forward to collaborating with you and supporting you, Dr. Sams. Um, and if I can be helpful, you know, please reach out, of course, anytime. Thank you so much for that, Scott. And thanks for staying on after one. Really appreciate it. Um, those, those are some excellent ideas. I, I'll tell him offline that you've already actually um, had a meeting with Kevin Law, luckily before he was stepping down. And I believe I can say this publicly, and if not, I'm sure Mike Kinane will yell at me later, that you have secured a position on, on the, the board of the Long Island Association. So that is that is very good. Well, well before, I think I found out about it after the fact. So um, that's excellent. Those were some excellent ideas and some of them I think uh, actionable rather quickly. Um, moving next, and there'll be an opportunity to comment on any of these ideas. Um, 
uh, after each college council member has spoken, but if there's something pressing, please feel free to chime in. Um, next is Ms. Melissa Archbold. She's with the Zion Youth and Family Center in Elmont. Um, Melissa, I see your camera's off, but are you ready to chat with us? Yes, sure. Okay. Greetings, everyone. Uh, and I just want to thank Madam Chair for your introduction. And I want to greet everyone, especially um, the new president at All Westbury, Dr. Sam. Uh, I want to congratulate you once again on your new role. And um, all everyone that is here present in this morning on uh, no, our afternoon actually is past one o'clock right now. And I'm trying to try to get my bearings right now. You know, when you work for so long, sometimes the time flies and you don't realize that it's already noon, past noon. But in any event, um, I just want to um, give some recommendation in terms of what I do best in my community. As an advocate um, for so many years in the area, not only um, of education and mental health, I have come across um, that last year due to the pandemic, a lot of the students in our communities of color have suffered a lot. And I'm quite sure that other communities also, the pandemic have suffered um, a lot in many areas. But one of the things that, I'm, that I would like to see moving forward is that due to the changes that the colleges have made on um, remote learning, many students have had challenges right now in applying learning in with these changes. And I wonder if there's any um, data about those changes, those challenges, because I am in very in, in communication or in touch with the body um, somehow, some fashion. There are a lot of students that attend always very that are from my community and they have shared a lot of challenges and um, moving forward, um, I would like to see how can I help to assist probably providing some resources and redirecting them to trying to implement on um, mental health awareness in workshops um, virtually and to trying to expand a pipeline of um, referral with students when they are coming on board to um, to the college for as freshmen that they also can partake of those workshops simultaneously so they could be acclimated also into the college experience because in the past many high school students when they have to go to do a tour in our campus you know that will have to be in person but now that is COVID restrictions I don't know how that is going to be done and so if there's anything already in place virtually for those students that are coming on board mentally psychologically we want to be prepared for for that as well that is all that i have on my desk right now thank you very much melissa for your thoughts on that and it is a very uh, important topic which makes you a, a key council member uh, on this college council so thank you um, next, we have Dr. Philip Elliott. He's a, he's a senior pastor at the Antioch Baptist Church. Um, he also is very politically connected in Nassau County. He happens to work in the Nassau County Board of Elections right, right across the street from, from me. And I apologize that I don't have your current title li listed. So you can introduce yourself with your current title for Nassau County. Um, and I happen to know that Dr. Elliott has already had a, a, a meeting, a sit down with uh, Dr. Sams um, and has introduced him to some very important leaders. So um, with that, I'll just give you the floor. Go ahead, Dr. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your leadership. We, uh, we are inspired by your leadership and um, to the other fellow uh, council members and to the new staff members, um, welcome. Um, I'll try to be very brief, I will be very brief. Um, my uh, major connections, I would think, as Melia suggested, are in the faith communities. Uh, 
I'm in my 46th year of giving leadership in the faith community, many of whom, and I've taught in seminary for over 30 years. So many of the persons that are in the faith community of occupants of pulpits are former students of mine, strong connections, and many of them have strong connections also. So the faith, as well as the political, as was alluded to, having served as a former deputy county executive over health and human services, minority affairs, and so forth. Um, I, um, I, um, I would like to um, make myself available for strong introductions to the chairpersons of both political parties, Democratic as well as Republican, and maybe some of the others, the independent and others of Nassau, of course, and the state. And the reason why is because those are some strong inroads to the elected officials whom I have strong relationships with, whether in the Senate or in the assembly, which has a lot of uh, control and influence over funding that may come down through uh, those channels. Uh, we work very hard to get many of those individuals elected and we cherish the relationships that we have uh, with them. Uh, in terms of economic development, I'm very involved there, doing a lot of consulting with a lot of development that's going on and developers, which also can be a strong source of some of the philanthropy that you would want to um, uh, achieve uh, for, uh, for the institution. Uh, many of them are philanthropic in, in, uh, in their own regards. Um, community development um, is another area in which we have strong ties, which allows us to engage with many of the strong uh, community <clears throat> leaders, including those that serve some of your student populace, like the EOC, which is the federally designated anti-poverty program, and they have a lot of programs and opportunities there, all the way into internships and so forth. Um, I would like to also make myself available. I consider myself to be one of the specialists in Nassau County in terms of the MWBE, which we don't hear a lot of in Nassau County. The governor has spent a lot of time with that initiative and did make a lot of improvements. Um, but I'm very concerned since we serve uh, minorities in a great deal that the contracts um, that come through uh, SUNY or Westbury have some consideration for MW. Um, BE, minority and or women business uh, enterprises uh, that, could, uh, that could really impact um, the circulation of revenues among those that you serve. I listened carefully as you talked about an area, uh, Mr. President, of aftercare and how we could be better in that regard. And I think that these are inroads. Um, some of these uh, uh, I'd like to work with you in terms of the internships and some of the affiliations that I have and opportunities. And I think those, those have turned out to be uh, opportunities where people are hired after they would have done internship or gained experiences and resume while yet studying. And that has happened uh, in my experiences that persons who prove themselves um, end up getting hired. And I, you know, that, that, that happens a lot. Um, in so speaking on that regard, in terms of community development and economic development, we're also dealing with community impact studies that the students could engage in, as well as disparity studies. So those kinds of opp uh, opportunities are available for them to get involved in and also be a path toward uh, post-college uh, 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 opportunities. Uh, those of uh, those, um, those, those kind of fit into, um, as you talked about, the uh, SUNY system laying out its diversity and uh, plan. And uh, I think this, these two opportunities, community impact and disparity studies are things that Nassau County sorely need and is talking about and funding has been designated for it. And I think not only Hofstra students, but SUNY Old Westbury students should be involved in those initiatives. Um, I have strong relationships, as um, Millie knows, with the judiciary, um, and um, there are opportunities there. As a matter of fact, I um, serve on the district attorney's uh, task force, several, and we have some interns coming from SUNY or Westburg into the district attorney's office. So those are other opportunities uh, for career paths and uh, that can be valuable experiences. Um, also involved with the school districts, the uh, the superintendents and so forth, and the individual who supervises superintendents 
and so forth. And um, so there's, there are serious opportunities to connect with the superintendents to get, for recruitment purposes, to get us getting students toward SUNY or Westbury, um, but getting involved, establishing meaningful relationships even prior to them being admitted uh, through some opportunities there. Those are a few opportunities I would like to make myself available for. And of, and of course, as you know, we've already met with major uh, community leaders in the faith communities that go beyond, some of whom are elected officials and, and uh, aspiring elected officials. So if all of that happen, helps with us, uh, and I'd like to be a part of that. As Millie mentioned, that part of our role is liaison for local communities, and that's what I do best. And I make myself available for you in that regard and for the institution. Thank you very much, Dr. Elliott. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, all of those ideas, and, and a lot of our, a lot of our experiences and backgrounds they sort of overlap quite quite a bit. So um, I would love to be a part of all of those uh, discussions uh, offline. All right, next we have uh, Council Member Judge William Hohauser. He's a District Court Judge, sit in Nassau County District Court. Um, prior to that, he was in private practice, did court law. Very very brilliant attorney. Uh, <laughs> Phenomenal writer um, and is officially the longest standing council member here, has a lot of knowledge about the institution. Take it away, Bill. All right, I, I'm actually going to time myself and I'm just going to show you the best illustration of how I am the longest serving, contrary to Scott's assertion. Hair, see, that's not hair anymore. I had a full head when I was here. Anyway, Dr. Sams, it's good to see you, Millie. Uh, my fellow council members, I look forward to continuing to work with the institution that I've grown to love over the last, I don't know, 13, 14 years, however long it's been. Uh, Dr. Sams, I'm going to offer you some inroads into several areas that you might not have considered, or maybe you have, some of which I've tried to bring up before. One is working on political campaigns. Um, that's something that people can do right away. I can, I can give a very, very good introduction in North Hempstead, uh, where I work with uh, various politicians. In particular, I can introduce you to the person who will, will very likely be the next supervisor in North Hempstead, that is uh, Wayne Wink, and get people working on campaigns, getting people internships there, uh, how to run a campaign. As a matter of fact, some of the people who have interned at my, uh, at my introduction have gone on to work, for example, for what is now the uh, campaign manager and office manager for Chuck Levine, uh, who many of you may, may know. Uh, that is one area. It's not just limited to North Hempstead. Also, the contacts I have with, with Nassau County in general can be very helpful. Another one, uh, another instance would be in the industry in which I formerly served, which is uh, financial services. I, all, I tried to set up a program a few years ago with getting people internships at various uh, financial services companies such as Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and the somehow the communication broke down, but I think we can resurrect it and get people into a, a, an industry that really is very important in this industry. As, as Comptroller DiNapoli notice, uh, notes every year, Financial services provides more than a third of the re of the tax revenue in New York in New York City, and a good percentage of that in New York State. It's the engine by which New York State runs, and I think that's very important. Uh, and it's also under, unser underserved in this in this era, in this college. I think we can do we can do some fabulous things in getting people involved. It's a very interesting industry. Um, this also extends on the regulatory side. I have very good contacts in, with the Security Exchange Commission, with FINRA. Uh, New York Stock Exchange doesn't do it so much anymore. And also the New York State Attorney General's Office and specifically with respect to financial institutions. So this is something that I can help with. And by the way, with respect to the firms themselves, I have uh, very good connections with almost every major uh, financial firm. So that is something that I can do and will do. One other issue that was briefly touched upon is getting involved in the local newspapers and local, uh, local uh, civic groups. Um, there are many, many active political groups. And for example, where I live in Port Washington, who I think you would be very interested to see what they're doing and how they're doing it. 
And I think that sort of engagement uh, could transform itself into something helpful to Old Westbury. I'd also like to mention something about blank slate media, for example. That's one, uh, that's one paper that is very prevalent and very popular right now. And they have, uh, as Scott was mentioning, uh, columns available for people who want to write. And I have very good connections with that, uh, with that uh, outfit. So I just wanted to give you those ideas right away. Quickly, I am now under four minutes. So I just want to, I, I just want everybody to know that because I actually did keep to the time limit and gave you some ideas. Thank so. you. Thank you very much for that, Bill, because we know you like to talk, but you did you did it under five minutes. <laughs> Four minutes and three seconds, Millie. I timed it. Thank you. I, okay. I would love to see some of these ideas uh, come to fruition. But uh, I'm ready, willing, and able to help out. Actions will be the will be the next discussion. Fine. Okay, moving on, moving on to Miss Kanye Infante, she, uh, the next council member to speak. Uh, she's one of the newly elected council members along with me. She's the Vice President, Brand Strategy, Beth Page Federal Credit Union. Uh, Kanye, why, why don't you take it away? Where is she? Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm really excited um, to be here today and to really talk about how we can re-energize Sunni Old Westbury along with the leadership that's represented here today in this meeting. And of course, Dr. Sams and, and the new staff, um, you know, everyone welcome to, to, to the SUNY always very family. Uh, I really think everyone that's here is committed to the mission and we want to continue to, you know, get the word out. I think from my perspective, I wanted to just highlight three opportunities um, that we can discuss further and or, you know, flush out um, beyond. I heard you speak, uh, you identify five areas. Um, as you were speaking, Dr. Sams, um, and one of them is about branding. And so, you know, happy to assist in any way that I can with my expertise, just, you know, in my current role within Beth Page Federal Credit Union and um, assist in any way possible that that, that may uh, be an opportunity to collaborate on. Um, but more broadly uh, in looking at how can we get you connected to the community? Um, I am um, sure Martha may speak to some of this too, but as part, being a Hispanic um, in Long Island, um, there's, I have developed strong relationships throughout um, over the years with the Hispanic community specifically. I know others have mentioned some local newspapers. Um, so Noticias is one of the largest Hispanic newspapers uh, on Long Island. And I have a very close relationship with the owners, the Schnapps family has been taking over. Uh, it has been taking over from the original founders. And, um, you know, one, they also run the best of program, the best of Long Island program. Um, they, they run it, that program is sponsored by Beth Page. Um, so, you know, not necessarily, I don't know if there's any opportunities there, but just know that we do have a really strong relationship with them and can target the Hispanic community and get the, the, the Westbury name out there in, in a very positive way. So happy to assist in making those connections. Um, and even they'll be super open to even brainstorming of things that we can do um, to get the, the Westbury name out. So that's, that's one of the first one. Um, Another one is uh, we also sponsor a program with News 12 um, with Kevin Marr. It's, in a, um, it's called Scholar Athlete. Some of you may, familiar, may be familiar with it, um, that they identify high school graduates um, throughout Nassau, Nassau and Suffolk County, and they get awarded, um, they, they have to be nominated by the school and they get awarded a scholarship. There might be a good synergy just because there's education, right? To, to kind of make those introductions and make connections in, 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 those, in those fronts. So happy to assist in that. And lastly, going out, you know, this is again, brainstorming and sharing ideas um, through Beth Page and through my role as a brand, um, as VP of brand, we have created an ambassador program internally with employees and maybe there, there's something there to kind of engage the student body and um, create a program that they, they're our best advocates, right? We have plenty of success stories as well within, um, within um, SUNY or Westbury. And, and I think we also need to find ways of how do we share that message that is beyond um, 
you know, I think that they're the best um, representation of the school and, and, and I think there's opportunity there as well. So those are so far the things that I've come up with, happy to discuss further and flush them out and see what makes sense. I think we all have shared a lot of opportunities and uh, really excited to be part of, um, you know, moving SUNY Ole Miss Ferry forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kanye. Excellent ideas. And as you can all see, about half of the, a little bit more than half of the college council members have spoke. And you could see the real diversity of thought that, that we have here at, at OS Berry's College Council. Um, next, next college council member to, to share some thoughts with us is Ms. Martha Maffe. She's the executive director, SEPA Mujer, uh, Services for the Advancement of Women. Very, very critical, important uh, area, especially to our campus. Um, go ahead, Martha. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Millie. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and share uh, my stories, um, um, my uh, ideas, I'm sorry. Um, so it's just quoting what um, our president, Dr. Sands, mentioned about social justice um, and how we engage the college uh, through this movement of social justice, which is so important and critical, especially right now. So I, I wanted to, pro I work uh, through SEPA Mujer with different other college, and I want to bring all these opportunities to all Westbury. So we have opened different internship opportunities for whatever is civic engagement, political campaigns, a leadership development, and we work in collaboration with different um, um, non-profit organizations, but also social justice organizations. So we belong in different coalitions, uh, groups, nationwide, statewide, and local organizations. So I, uh, we have around um, 15 different coalitions where SEPA Mujer is part of, and we have a, the, a network or, a, or around 150 organizations statewide that we can look for opportunities for our students to get involved with all these organizations in Nassau and Suffolk, and it also um, out of, of, of Long Island. So I think it, um, coalition building of um, social justice and um, community organizing, leadership development is such a great experience for the students that are aligned into, into the organizing uh, career. Um, are also, um, I am very interested to have a project that we can work with young uh, immigrants before they choose the college where they want to go. So we have a program that is called Focus to, to, to Latinas Youth, uh, this called Girls Act, in which every uh, is a partnership with the Suffolk County. Uh, we basically host about 10 uh, young Latinas and they basically get uh, prepare um, to different careers, financial literacy, uh, getting having the opportunity to be in, to work in a non-profit platform. Uh, because um, to be honest, like many immigrants or, or Latinos, uh, especially young Latinos, they don't have these opportunities. They usually, their opportunities of work are going to fast food uh, uh, jobs but no, like being in an environmental of, of um, an employment uh, where they can really reach more capacity that they should uh, or they could. Um, so this is a program that, that we run and right now we are actually um, looking to create um, more funding to run the program all year round and work with for um, schools that have most of the uh, Latinos and Black community, like the William Floyd High School, Pacho Medford School, Riverhead School, and Brangor School. So I want to see this opportunity, like to start early and bring those potential students to all Sunny Westbury. And, 
And um, there is another project that I actually started to work on it, um, like uh, before COVID. And I think I would like to bring this idea to all Sony Westbury and is to create a social justice incubator. I see a good models nationwide that has been working and Sepa Mujer has last December, we have the opportunity to buy our own building. And now we have the space to bring students to home. And in this building, we are looking to create like a, a hub for different nonprofit organizations that they can come, like one stop shop. And um, when people from the community needs different services, they can find here in, in, in our location. So this will be a good opportunity again, you know, for students. We have so many uh, organizations that are always looking for uh, students. Uh, we run the GOTV campaign, uh, the Resist the Get Out the Vote campaign, uh, getting involved in political campaign, political uh, no partisan campaigns because we are a, a no profit organization, engaging civic engagement and I uh, do a lot of um, uh, organizing regarding uh, forums, uh, educational forums, like one of the big uh, um, issues that we are facing right now because I'm working with, with the county and the, the governor office as well uh, to reach out the immigrant community to get vaccinated. And there is a big concern because people don't want to get vaccinated because they don't have the right information. And there is a lot of uh, misinformation you know, going around. So I think it uh, uh, involves in, in students in all these initiatives are going to bring like a huge platform of experience for the students to working with the community, working with no profits, working with the government, working with elected uh, officials, um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm very uh, excited, but also it's a good opportunity if I know uh, the social justice incubator project that Sepa Mujer started to put it together, uh, it, um, it will be like a foundation to get uh, more funding for private foundations that I do have uh, the uh, relationships, uh, especially in the past year. It is um, a lot of private foundation from the city that usually they didn't come to Long Island because they always have the misconception that Long Island have money and Long Island have the rich people living here, so they don't need funding. So this, this mentality is also changing. And um, now there are um, a, a good number of private foundation from the city that are expanding the funding here in Long Island. So I think it will be the first social justice incubator in Long Island. Uh, and I think that uh, Long Island is very special. We, we have like a, a unique situation with the demographic and all the needs that we have in Long Island. And I think that uh, uh, is something that I would like to offer uh, to always very, um, uh, another um, idea, uh, well, uh, we already have, as Kanya um, has explained it uh, before, um, regarding the relationship that I had built over these 15 years working as a mujer with many uh, um, a local uh, business and also um, a chamber of commerce, uh, again, college. Um, an elected official. So we we here at least in Suffolk, uh, Sepa Mujer is very have a very good, a strong relationship with our uh, elected officials. And um, a suggestion that I have is like when we think about reaching out uh, the media, like News Dave, um, um, uh, the monthly column, uh, the or newsletters. I think it's very important also like to, to try to bring uh, all this information 
to the Latino community. Um, I think a, a bilingual, a, you know, um, reach out to the, to the bilingual um, local uh, media is going to be crucial because it's a, it's a not only la, um, language connection, but it's culture connection. And I think that that is going to be a very uh, important. And lastly, um, if, if the idea, if you know, there is more way how we can connect uh, Dr. Sam with progressive groups. So maybe why not like, organize a, in a community forum? And I would like to help that to introduce Dr. Sam with a new agenda a project to our a progressive and social justice uh, movement in Long Island. Thank you so, so much, Martha. Um, I think this is the first time this group is actually um, having, you know, uh, this, this sort of a brainstorming meeting and, and these are excellent, excellent uh, ideas. So thank you for that. Uh, our student representative is next, who I know might be a little bit nervous after everyone that spoke, but I just wanna preface it with this. Khalif, you have you always have had great ideas, and I know your ideas are going to be creative. It is from a student's perspective, which we all need to hear. And I know, I am certain, you are going to be a superstar SUNY Old Westbury alum. And in 15, 20 years, you will be on a panel somewhere in a meeting speaking just as you've heard the professionals here speak. So nothing to be nervous about. Take it away. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Millie. Um, I agree with what everybody said already. Um, I would say, I spoke to my team last night because Millie did call me and ask me um, some questions and stuff beforehand. Um, so one of the questions was two creative ideas of how to integrate our president into the communities and departments. So as far as the departments, um, my executive vice president, Olu, she said to have a sit down round table talk once a semester, not an open forum or a town hall a dress down casual conversation style event where we could just talk to our president. Um, and for you to attend two to three programs for the semester, SGA or SGA club related. Um, regarding um, things to advance the institution from a student's perspective, I can say SGA um, back in 2007, after Hurricane Katrina happened, um, paid I think $10,000 to fly 35 students to Hurricane Katrina to help out. And um, we paid the airfare and I think first year experience paid for everything else. So I don't know if that was televised or media was related to that. That's something that should be pressed for the college. Um, at SGA, we did a social justice march for Black Lives Matter in June during the pandemic where we you know, marched for you know, social justice from Hicksville train station to Gay A. And that's something that should, I didn't think about it at the time but that's something that should have been not televised, but we should have got press for that. Um, I was shocked to see our acting dean of School of Education, Dr. Sugram there. So, and Usama actually came to support. So that support as a whole, students seeing everybody, like these high level people in these different positions come and support us. Um, I would say means a lot. Um, the curbside pickup is something we did for the class of 2020. That's something that should have gotten press. Um, I know I did sit on the presidential transition team and I did say that from a student perspective, the selling point of why students attend on Westbury is this location and how it's close to the city and everything else. Um, us showing, um, let me see how I can say this. All, this, all the things that we do, like social justice wise, academic wise, all of that stuff needs to be in the press. So it gives outsiders a better perspective of a Westbury and what we can offer. Because from my experience, like I just chose a Westbury because of the location. It wasn't until I got an SGA and I started looking at the mission of the college and started looking at everything where I appreciated it a lot more to the point where I don't even want to graduate this semester. Like I'm going to miss a Westbury. I don't want to graduate. So um, us- I told him he has to graduate. He must graduate. No staying on. <laughs> so us, I guess, so us, I guess, pushing that out will get SUNY or Westbury's name out there. Um, I did have a couple of fundraising ideas. Um, I don't know 
pauses wise, but I'm gonna just say a cause. So commencement, every year we do a commencement, right? We should do something to where we're fundraising for a certain cause where we order probably like shirts and example, 21 for class of 2021 and do a fundraiser for God knows what. I don't know what we're doing fundraiser for, but that's a good way to fundraise. Um, homecoming, that's something where we all come back. I don't know what type of fundraising we can do for that, but we can put something around there to do fundraising and donate for the college. Um, my advisor, Dean Claudia, she mentioned something about when she was at Hofstra, they would do like a leadership dinner. It was $350 per person to come. You could break it up into monthly payments, something like that where we have our alumni, because we have a lot of successful alumni that came out of Westbury, have them come back, have, I guess, community elected officials and stuff come back and fundraise for a special cause. So those are three good fundraising um, things that we can do. And on community service events, Dr. Sands, wherever you go community service wise, the student body will follow and your VPs and departments and stuff will follow as well. And we need to get pressed on that because it shows us all as a unified front us all together. So that's what I have to say. Thank you very, very much, Clay. Excuse me. Excellent ideas, all excellent ideas. Um, next, we have uh, Teresa Regnante, President and CEO of the United Way of Long Island. Over the past year, I've learned she is one of the most talented fundraisers I have ever met and is super creative. I mean, she just pulls ideas. Uh, very, very creative person. Um, I, I love going to her for advice. Teresa, I'm looking very forward to hearing what it is you have to share with us this afternoon. Well, hello everybody from the, uh, where am I? I'm, from, I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike. So. Um, <laughs> turnpike coming back from Florida where I had uh, opportunity in the past week to meet with 10 donors individually. So it's been a long, long week to get home. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think what every council member and student have said is really extraordinary in that there's certainly, Dr. Sams, I mean, it, it probably take two or three years to get through the level of, uh, of ideas and implementation. So really my, my strength for the college more lies in the connections and the connections, not just only for the president. I think, you know, that, that saying, uh, you know, team together, each accomplishes more. It's really trying to take the cabinet and the next level of the college and integrate them into community in a way where some of these great ideas and great projects can come to life because it'd be virtually impossible for one person to take on the awesome list um, that was presented uh, this afternoon. And so I'm certainly willing whether it's the REDC meetings, as you identify people to serve externally uh, on the college's behalf, I'm happy to align my senior vice president team with some of your members as well and just sort of help integrate them a little bit different in the um, external environment to the college. Because I think the more people we have, um, connected and in partnership with other projects and programs and services, certain uh, better impact we'll have for the students for, for, you know, for certain. And, and uh, Dr. Sam's United Way of Long Island has a board, board of about 55 people as, as powerful as the LIA. You know, we don't expect board members to, to give $25,000 in a sponsorship to something. Um, so Likely, if you, if you would like, when our rotation nominations come around, which usually is each October, November, happy to put your name into nomination. Um, and there's, you know, 55 uh, leaders there from labor, from community, from corporations, from the controller's office, from business, from, from academia. And um, I'm, I certainly would, can be very helpful on the strategy side of implementation of program and an external partnership. So the great things that the college is doing internally, um, how that becomes external will be the success. And um, I can really spend a little time helping 
um, members of your team um, be relational to what's relevant on Long Island and whether they're training programs, vocational programs, and then hopefully Sunil Westbury will be a leader in building a partnership with other institutions that you're not doing this work alone in a vacuum, that you get together with uh, the other colleges, the other city colleges, and really try to gain more momentum together than separate. Um, and, and I've done that my entire career uh, for 30 years as a not-for-profit executive, just trying to take the passenger seat, not so much the driver's seat all the time, and um, figure out um, you know, what you're going to be expert at and lead in that way, but make sure you're a co-pilot to a lot of other uh, programs and activities. So I'll leave it there because I know the uh, hour is going. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Teresa. And we've also had an opportunity to share other ideas on the transitional committee. I have a long list that I'm not going to share. I'm going to have those discussions offline because I rather uh, continue to explore and, and talk about, first of all, hear a response um, fr from our president. And also for anyone else that wants to comment in the 12 minutes that we have left, I, I will share one uh, that, that I do want to um, make sure it gets noted. Well, one of the things I would like to do in the next 30 days, um, aside from setting up meetings uh, with, with Dr. Sams and our Nassau County executive, uh, Laura Curran, who, whose team I have a good relationship with, and Laura Curran herself, um, as well as the DA, Madeline Singus, and uh, the chairman of the Democratic Party, Jay Jacobs, I think it would have to be Dr. Elliott that sets up sets up the meeting with the Republican chairman. But um, it, aside from those meetings, which are very important, and that gives you the political connections, I would like to arrange a, a meeting with you and the, and the president of, or the head of a company called Symbiosis. Symbiosis um, is a, they're educational consultants. They've been doing uh, fantastic work. Um, from what I know now, with about 25 to 30 universities, higher ed institutions across the country. Uh, they've been very successful. I happen to have, through my husband, a very good relationship with this individual, and I would like to, him to come in and make a presentation. And it's really about course development. It's about course development, program development. And I know the first question that pops up is, you know, resources. But there's a new model that they're building. It's a revenue sharing model where certain uh, student support services are provided, um, as well as marketing for new degrees or, or courses. It, it would actually be a hybrid of both, um, you know, utilizing a, a high flex model, training faculty on it. There's a lot that they do, and it's a niche area. And if you look at our numbers, when you look at our stats and uh, the percentage of undergrad or graduate students um, that are not enrolled in any distance learning and the number of online degrees we have compared to even other SUNY institutions, we have a, a long way to go. But this is, I, I think, a workable way to you know, um, try to catch up, so to speak, uh, since we are a tuition-based uh, revenue institution, and that's what we largely rely on, but we don't want to continue to fully rely on that. But that's definitely an area that I think, you know, having this meeting before they become way too expensive um, and, and getting them on board uh, would be a, a key thing to do. And there's a lot more to say on that topic, but I, I, I really do want to just continue to talk about what we ha talked about here today. Um, I, I really would like to see the ideas, these were excellent ideas that were raised here today, come to fruition and not just be all talk. I am honored to serve on this council with, with these council members who all volunteer their time. We're all volunteers, unpaid positions. And you have heard from each one of us, um, the entire council is ready, willing and able to help you succeed and to help the institution succeed um, and take it to the next level. Um, these ideas were, were well thought out. 
Um, a lot of them are actionable uh, fairly soon. So I'm going to stop talking because I could just keep talking and just hear responses from uh, anyone else that's here. Uh, certainly Dr. Sam, if you wanna comment on, on any of the ideas that were raised. Well, I won't comment on the ideas. I was first say thank you. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And I can tell you that uh, this is far beyond any expectation I could have conjured up. The breadth and the depth of the ideas, the level of willingness to help us to elevate the institution and to support my efforts as president to lead that effort uh, supersedes my expectations along that line. Uh, I certainly can tell you that as folks were sharing, the wheels were turning because the scope of that which had been shared was beyond just simply connecting us to the community. Um, and I can assure you that not only were my wheels turning as I looked across the screen, a lot of the deans, uh, vice presidents, everyone's wills were turning because I think we are clear that we want to continue to elevate the institution. So I am struck not only by, again, those items that spoke directly to connecting with the community, but I'm also struck about those things that really can help us shape and advance our co-curricular experience, our student experience, particularly as we develop ex ex executive functioning skills for them, post-graduation, to integrate them and engage them in their careers already, you know, with their feet running, so to speak. Just the level of complexity and sophistication was heartening, and it will be helpful as we think about, again, that value proposition and how we respond to the need to have it elevate and to be our calling card, not just in Long Island and New York, but across the country. So I can tell you, uh, Millie, it's, it's a very heartening moment for me to know that the number of hands that we have at our disposal to do the heavy lifting that's at, that exists before us is well beyond those whom I've met with on a regular basis and extend and, and, and far into the community and at very deep levels. So I really appreciate what you've said and I really appreciate the offer. And you can rest assured that we, not just me, but folks around this screen, because this represents the leadership of our institution, will be engaging. Uh, and so thank you for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Sams. <clears throat> I, I, I echo, I don't want to say that I was surprised, but I was very pleasantly surprised because while I separately had discussions with all the council members, I didn't know what anyone was going to say. So it was really, really, really warming. Um, and I would love to call a special meeting sooner rather than later to brainstorm how to action a lot of these items. Um, which would have to be public if it's more than just a couple of council members um, getting together. Is there anyone else that's on this call that would like to share, comment in any way? Mike Kinane, is there anyone from the public that's in the waiting room that wants to get in? Dr. Shadi, thank you for being here. Oh, the Millie folks. Um, just, I just, can I take an opportunity to uh, welcome Dr. Uh, Sims into our home, if you will. And uh, I'm looking forward to see all Westbury moving to a new height. And uh, I hope this will happen in the foreseeable future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shadi. Big cheerleader for our, for our campus. Madam Chair. This is Joanne Robinson, and I just wanted to say how excited I am to be here and to be joining the team. And what I would like to offer um, as you move forward are different format, formats in terms of how to organize going forward. And so I've been a part of an institution that has reimagined the role of the College Council, where they are breaking up into small committees where they identify priorities and representatives from the council are assigned different work groups. 
And so I would be willing and, you know, excited to share some of those models. So as you go forward, there's an organizational structure to create opportunities for engagement and to really push forward on some of these initiatives. So I offer my service. Thank you. I think that would be very helpful. And the, the thought that always comes to mind, which I always look to Mike Kinane for, is when, when, what number is it that we would then have to make it public? Or when do we have to notify all? Can two council members get together? Because I've thought about breaking up into smaller groups. And I don't know, um, you know, the laws. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember off the top. Of, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's when you get to four or five. So I guess as long as we keep it smaller, but we'll always make sure we're in compliance with the mm -hmm. uh, open meetings law, and and the re regulations that we are we are under. And when we need to make it public, we'll call a special meeting. And there are certain times that we can go into executive session to talk about um, certain topics. Yes, Duncan, go ahead. Um, uh, again, I'd like to also express my gratitude uh, to the council. Uh, and uh, these are some really excellent ideas that have been offered and look forward to making them actionable items. Um, two comments. One, uh, I'd like to point out that Middle States is likely to have some activity with us also on probably the evening of the 21st. That's probably likely to be something sort of introductory, not sort of as germane to the actual uh, meeting itself, uh, but just wanted to mention that. And with respect to uh, the what you've offered, even as it relates to curriculum, I'm happy to report that the faculty have been very good about the development of new uh, credentialing options for students that include micro-credentials. Um, two more recent ones that were added include Spanish translation and professional skills for the workplace. Uh, I, I think the idea of how we get those even to get packaged uh, in terms of mixed modalities so that we can uh, better develop what is our distance learning uh, platform and create other options for students, uh, including adult learners and our alumni who may wanna come back and uh, continue their own professional development uh, trajectory. I, I think we're, we're resonating with you entirely on what you have shared. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Corliss. Um, I think this was a very productive meeting. I, I can't wait to watch it over again. Uh, and it is exactly two o'clock. I know Dr. Sands uh, has a very important meeting to get to this afternoon. So if there's no other comments um, or anything else to be said, I will take a motion to adjourn. Millie, before you adjourn, can I just ask, it's Teresa, yes. whoever, whoever is um, responsible on the campus uh, for the work with the veterans, can someone reach out to me because we have about $10,000 worth of gift cards to be able to give the college for those veterans, and I just, um, I'm not connecting well, okay, so I don't know who that individual is, I know that there's a student, um, responsibility as well, but I don't know where it falls within the college, um, you know, faculty, if you will, if there's a faculty advisor. So I see, um, I see Penny Chin nodding her head. So I, I guess okay. I'll have, I'll have Penny. So I'll, can you call, just call my cell phone. I'll be happy to chat with you. I'll give it to you, Penny. All right. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank to you. Awesome. $10,000 in gift cards. Can this meeting get any better? Sure. Um, Okay, I will take a motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Second. Kanye, second, and the motion is adjourned. I mean, the motion, the meeting is adjourned <laughs> <laughs> until about April. Thank you. It's good to see you all. Can't thank you enough. Uh, until the next time, it'll be sometime in April.